Welcome to worship on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, as we worship together and celebrate together. Our overreaching theme for Advent has been the heart of Christmas, and today we celebrate the heart of love. I'm Pastor Boss, serving as the senior interim pastor here, and I have just a few announcements to share with you this morning. First of all, right after this service, I will be in the library if you have any questions regarding this time of interim. I would love to have some conversation with you, so grab a cup of coffee or hot chocolate and come on over. Our worship times for Christmas Eve afternoon worship are, is to, begins at 2 o'clock with the live streaming, 3.30 with the drive-in worship as well, and 5 p.m. And then our Christmas Eve candlelight service has a new slightly earlier time, so that will be at 10 o'clock. So Christmas Eve candlelight service begins at 10 this year. And then on Christmas Day, we will worship together with Holy Communion at 10 in the morning. And then that first Sunday of Christmas, which is the 26th, we will have one worship service, and that will be at 10 a.m. as well. We invite you to bring over, bring with you that Sunday at 9 o'clock leftover treats, and we'll have a smorgasbord of leftover Christmas treats together before we worship together then at 10 on the 26th. We are a church that prays together and a church that believes in the power of prayer. And this morning, for the women of the congregation, if you would like to sign up to have a prayer sister for this coming year, you will see some folks out in the lobby area to answer any questions you may have about that and give you a chance to sign up for that as well. My last announcement this morning has to do with our confirmation students. They are working on a program, or excuse me, a fundraising for a service project called Christmas, Operation Christmas Angel, and they're trying to raise some funds for that. So if you'd like some hot chocolate this morning, they are also out in the lobby, and so they would appreciate you supporting them. If you don't like hot chocolate, I'm sure that they would still appreciate you supporting them uh, financially or just with a word of encouragement today. So that's for our confirmation students. So please help out that way. And so now I am going to invite you to share the peace of Christ with one another. We do that fist bumps, high fives, or waving hi. And to those of you online, we say hi to you and the peace of Christ be with you as well. Let's share the peace of the Lord. This morning, our worship service is indeed a, a special service that we highlight to the gift of all of our musicians here. And as I was thinking about that and, and listening to them rehearse throughout these weeks, I thought, gee, I wanted to find a way to say thank you in a special way. And then I realized, you know, they do this 52 weeks out of the year. Our musicians give us an incredible experience in worship, and they give so much of themselves and their time so that we can have a very robust and beautiful worship life here at Zion. And so for every Sunday that you musicians do that, we give you thanks. For the directors who do all the behind-the-scenes work, we give you thanks. And for the people who do the sound and the setup, we give you thanks for giving us such a beautiful worship life. Will you help me in advance of today? Help me thank them. We thank you so very much from the bottom of our hearts because it really does enrich our life. I want to share also this quote that is found in a German opera house. Bach gave us God's word, Mozart gave us God's laughter, Beethoven gave us God's fire, God gave us music, that we might pray without words. And yet, some of the most beautiful music comes with the most meaningful words, and so we need both words and music to pray and to better love both God and our neighbor. And so in the fashion of Mary, who magnified the Lord with her soul and her life, we worship together.
blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of love. Amen. Please be seated.
Today, we light four candles on our Advent wreath. We wait with hearts Heart of, of love. love. We wait with love for the good news of Emmanuel, God with us. It is by God's great love that we are given Jesus. Today, we light four candles, and our hearts are renewed with love. At the heart of Christmas is the love we are given in Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we light these candles, we rejoice with hearts of hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Christ and come with your abundant grace and might free us from the sin that binds us that we may receive you in joy and serve you always for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen My brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The greatest thing that can be said about love is that love has come for us in a manger. 
So then the greatest question for us is how might we respond to that great love? So just three quotes for us to think about today. From Augustine, one of the earliest church fathers. What does love look like? It has the hands to help others. It has feet to hasten to the needy. It has eyes to see people as Christ sees people. It has ears to hear the sights and sorrows of others. That is what love looks like. And then a definition from a contemporary theologian, Bob Goff. If I am only willing to love people who are nice to me, or the ones who see things the way that I do, and avoid all the rest, why then that is like reading every other page of the Bible and thinking I know what it says. And then from Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Lutheran theologian who writes from prison during World War II. And remember that he is writing this in prison. To abide in love means to have open eyes, to be able to see something that only a few see, namely, the outstretched hands of others who need us along the way, and then to only be able to act and nothing else, to help and nothing else, to do one's duty and nothing else, to use everything one has and nothing else. Most important is that wherever it is, one must always allow for oneself to be interrupted by God to love the other. For God loves the whole of creation, and that means me, but it also means my neighbor, those I find easy to love, and those who are not easy to love. May God's peace, joy, hope, and love abound in your hearts. Amen. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Lights that twinkle red and green Charlie Brown on the TV screen Hugs from friends and family That's what we need right now Zipping up a winter coat Truck tires on a snowy road That's the sound of coming home That's what we need right now This world could use a little healing And our hearts could show you something to believe in we need Christmas now more than ever to bring us together. We need Christmas come on December. Help us remember the joy, the peace, and the hope that love can bring. Cause we need Christmas. Singing carols in the living room That's Grandma's favorite thing to do And Grandpa reads Luke chapter 2 That's what it's all about It's a red salvation army can It's reaching out a helping hand It's looking after our fellow men That's what we need right now Christmas 
más This world could use a little healing And our hearts could show you something to believe in
a reading from the 10th chapter of Hebrews. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasures in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law, then he added, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel and remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
Let us pray. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Through Christ Jesus, our pathway and our peace. Amen. And together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Pray that every 
invite you to please stand for the prayers of the church. We will include in our prayers the family and friends of Mary Phelps. A memorial service and celebration of life will be held for Mary on uh, January 7th at 10 o'clock here at Zion. So we lift her family and friends and all who know sorrow and grief in this time. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn to know of God's presence. Come to bring peace to those at war with themselves, their families, their enemies. May those who govern do so with goodwill and justice, breaking down barriers, fostering understanding, and drawing our communities and our nations together in your peace and your love. Hear us, O God. Come to bring comfort to those in pain those who grieve, those who need healing and restoration. We name before you Rick and Jennifer, Nakia, Celia, Marlene, Carrie, Jackie, Ken, Mark, Pete, Nancy, Diane, Dick, Kathy, Laura, Samuel, Julianne, Janine, Dawn, Susie, Sharon, Mary, and those we name in our own hearts. May they be assured of your extra extravagant grace and comforted by the promise that nothing separates them from your love. Hear us, O oh God. Come to bring us courage so that just as Mary heard your word and trusted you and then lived with your love and joy, we might fill your word with love, peace, joy, and hope. Hear us, O oh God. God of new life, you come among us in places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Receive the blessing. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen.
fitting, yes. Thank you. Thank you again so much to all of our musicians and our directors and all who help behind the scenes, not only for today, but for every Sunday. Thank you. I remind you to grab some hot chocolate and to sign up for Prayer Sisters or the silent auction and come visit me in the library. And as you take the joy, hope, and love of today out into this world, let us remember that with all that we are and all that we do, we will trust, live, and serve Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.